So when we're doing magic, the three core components, the three things we have to master, what we're working with are breath work, visualization, and vibration. To me, by far the most important of those things was the breath work because it dictates uh, your interaction with the energetic realm, with what we call in magic, the etheric realm or the astral realm. You know, we have this saying in magic, as above, so below, or as within, so without. What this means is, you know, just one example, as we inhale physically and take in oxygen with our physical forms, uh, our energetic forms are also taking in a kind of energy that there is a name for in pretty much every culture and civilization in the world except ours. For example, the Chinese call it chi, the Japanese call it ki, the Hebrews call it ruach, uh, the Indians call it prana. Uh, Western civilization is pretty much the only culture in the world that, that hasn't really developed an, a name or an understanding for this underlying matrix of energy that is within and surrounding the material world. What you're doing with this energy up until then, until you start manifesting, is using it as spiritual sustenance. Now, just like whenever you breathe, you are taking in oxygen that sustains you on the physical level, you're taking in this chi or this energy on the etheric or astral level that also uh, sustains and enhances the health of your astral or etheric body, which is the main Thing you are using whenever you do magic. You are moving etheric energy. And that doesn't matter if you're trying to manifest an apartment in a movie theater, or if you are trying to heal someone, or uh, whatever it is that you're trying to shape in your life, you are using etheric energy. The first step in this process is learning how to perceive it, which we do by breath work. Whenever you're doing breath work, what you are training yourself to do is become conscious of this energy that is within and behind all of the physical world. What this breath work is traditionally called in magic is either the radiant divine breath or the divine radiant breath. This name gives you a clue as to an element of how to practice it. When we're talking about radiant, Radiant means light. It means to shine. So what you're doing as you are practicing this breath work is you are visualize, visualizing light. And again, this light goes all the way back to ancient Samaria where they called it uh, melam or melamu. And they talked about people who had accumulated massive amounts of this energy around them. So what happens on that etheric or astral level of reality is you start to glow like, like a spotlight because you're taking in all this energy. People will notice that this is happening. However, they don't know how to process what it is that they are perceiving. They try to translate it into something physical. So if, once you're doing this for a while, people may start to say things to you like, did you get a haircut? Or did you lose some weight? Or is that a new shirt? or you know, they, they won't know what it is. They'll just know that there is some difference about you that they're picking up in some way that's positive, but they can't figure out what it is because they can only use the physical senses. The main reason what we're doing when we start with the breathing techniques is training ourselves to use a sense that is not a physical sense. It's not your eyes, it's not your ears, it's not your ability to feel or taste or touch. It is something else that you are trying to use for the very first time in your life. That's what we're doing whenever we're doing some of this breath work. You have to learn how to perceive and take in this energy before you can start to shape it to manifest things. When I use the word visualize, a lot of people will say, I'm not good at visualization or I can't visualize. In all actuality, you're visualizing all the time. You just don't realize it. Right now, if you think about what you're having for dinner tonight, you're visualizing it. If you remember what your grandmother's face looked like when you were seven years old, you're visualizing it. When you are picturing what you're wanting your future to be, what you want to move to, you're visualizing it. When you think about something that happened to you in the past, you're visualizing it. The, the, the thing is, the word visualize is what throws people off because the root of visualize is visual, which implies it is a sight. It's the sense of sight. 
first off, you're not perceiving it with your physical eyes. You will not physically see energy flying through the air. You are using the, remember a while ago I said as above, so below, just as you have this physical apparatus to detect things in the physical world with your eyes, you also have, and, and I don't know what the name of it would be, but you have a etheric counterpart to your physical eyes that also works in much the same way, that, that allows you to perceive things that are going on. However, vision, some people will not experience this as something they see. For some people, it will be a very sort of visual sensation. For other people, it will be more a sense of just knowing. For other people, it will be more that you actually feel what happens. When you take this energy in, you'll feel, oh my God, I feel better. I don't feel as tired as I was long ago. So don't let the word visual throw you off. You may not actually see anything. It will vary. Everyone's energy system is slightly different. Uh, so we'll all detect energy in slightly different ways. The third core component of magic is vibration. You know, we've talked about visualization. We've talked about breath work. What I'm talking about when I say vibration, whenever you're invoking the angels, you're vibrating their names. Now, what vibration does is literally teach you to move and direct energy. One of the first things we learn in magic is you vibrate the name that's associated with the pillar that you're trying to, or, or the sphere that you're trying to put energy in, into that part of your body. So for example, if you're vibrating the sphere that's in your throat, about where your throat chakra is, you want to feel that area of your body vibrating. If you're doing it with the one in your chest, you want to feel a vibration about where your heart is. If you're doing it with the one in your pelvis, you want to feel this vibration in the very core of your pelvis. If you're doing it in your feet, you want to feel it in your feet. It's like that saying where attention goes, energy flows. When you vibrate into a part of your body, not only are you moving your attention there, you are very forcefully moving energy there because that's what sound waves are also. Sound waves are energy. So you are moving energy in the form of sound waves into your body. Later on, you learn to also do this outside your body when you are vibrating energy because your consciousness is not confined to your physical body. You know, we are used to thinking that this is us. We're in here, but we aren't just in here. Yes, we are in here, but we are also out here. Our consciousness extends beyond the parameters, parameters of our body. Whenever we're vibrating the angel names, we are learning to move energy to places outside of our body. So think of these things, breath work, visualization, vibration. Think of them as being like a steering wheel, fuel, and directions for where you're wanting the energy to go.